Hey everyone, welcome back to my fertility series. Um, today's video is going to be more than a day long, um, but I'm starting it and this video is going to be all about my journey from fertility to conception. So this is gonna be a longer video um, because I'm basically documenting um, from now up until the point that I do get pregnant and kind of the struggles that I go through how I use my intuition, how I use my psychic ability to navigate things um, because I feel like not everybody has the resources um, that they need and and honestly everything that you need you have and you when you use your intuition you can connect to guidance, you can connect to your guides, you can get a peace of mind, you can get help and you don't have to have anyone else. You can use your psychic ability and get all the answers from within. So before I sort of start all of this, um, I do want to share some tips that I've already sort of known from the countless amounts of readings that I've done for women trying to get pregnant. Um, the biggest one is don't manic manifest. Um, I know that we really want to have babies, I'm in the same boat, but when you get crazy about a timeline or trying to make it happen or to the point where you are you are tracking your ovulation down to the second and having or making your partner have sex with you like five times that day, it just gets to be too much. And there's a point where that manic manifesting is more a sign that you need to be looking into something um, and it's less helpful. It's not helpful energy. But overall, the biggest thing that I tell people and they're always, they always come back to me and they're like, oh my gosh, you were so right, I just needed to chill, um, is just that let go of the timeline. Let go of the timeline. It will happen when it needs to happen. Um, and just look at it this way. The more time you have to prep, the better. And um, honestly, I look at that more time as a blessing because it gives me more time to prepare, more time to research, more time to nest in my house and buy all the things that I wanna buy. Um, and so keep keep positive. Don't manic manifest. Keep the timeline loose and it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. So jumping into my journey, um, me and my husband decided at the end of July this year, it's uh, July 2019, uh, we decided we were finally ready to have kids. Um, we've been talking about this for years. We, um, if you've seen the last video, I sort of talked about how we had a bunch of goals set up and we kind of wanted to hit them. And we got a good amount of those goals uh, crossed off our list. But we were both just feeling this intense, like, uh, energy of like, we just need to do it. We just need to do it now. And like, I was having dreams. Um, we were talking about it more often. We were around a lot of people that were pregnant it just seemed like good divine timing and so it was really sweet my husband came home um one week and he brought home a bottle of wine and he was like i'm ready to do this let's go i brought home a bottle of wine to celebrate and i was just like oh my god <laughs> um so that was a great way to start um again if you've seen the last video it's so important that both of you are on the same page knowing that I have his support and he actually will talk to me about it and is not resentful is going to make this process so much easier. So early August, we're going to start basically at the end of this week. Um, we did a ritual um, date night to sort of cap off this time in our life and welcome in this new time. And if you want to see more about that date, check out the end of the last video. I have all of the tools and the resources um, so that you can do this date with your significant other. So I am going to track my ovulation a little bit, but I know that I can't get crazy with it and I, I trust myself to not be crazy with it. I'm more just tracking it to sort of, you know, at least figure out when I'm ovulating so I don't feel like I have to have sex every single day. Um, not that that's a bad thing, but you know, it's, it's sometimes helpful, especially when we're busy. And, you know, if I'm completely missing that time of um, range of I don't even know when I'm ovulating, then it could be a whole nother month. I guess that's where I'm at at this point. And um, just keep watching to see some of the things that I do, the exercises that I do to connect with um, future babies, with my husband, with myself, um, and kind of this whole process. It's normally time to take my pill. 
Don't show my belly. <laughs> Throw it in the trash. Last one. <laughs> Try that again. One of the things that I wanted to do that my life coach gave me an idea for was to do some automatic writing and ask my future kids what they need. You can do automatic writing on all sorts of things and check out my video on how to actually do it. I got a little bit of information on what my first kid was going to be like, a little bit on their personality, some advice for me and advice for um, me to help my husband through this process, which was all very helpful. So I just got done at my OBGYN. Um, I just happened to have had my annual visit like two or three weeks after um, I've started this whole process. And so that was awesome because I got to basically tell her what I was doing, which has been hard to keep that secret. Um, and get a bunch of information from her. And I think the best part about that whole process was that, you know, she kept saying, you know, when you're pregnant, when you get pregnant, your baby, you're this. And it was like, whoa, this has just made it like way more real. And I think it made me realize that one of the ways you can help manifest this and help it happen is just by saying affirmative present tense things like I am going to be pregnant I am going to have a baby and saying stuff like that is definitely gonna help you manifest it more so this is the first week that I have been trying with my husband and it has been a crazy week um, and basically lost Mufasa check out the video on that um, my great-grandmother died and then I already had a trip planned to Arizona to go move my sister into her apartment. And the crazy thing about all of this was it was just like nonstop, like thing after thing after thing, stress after stress. Um, and I had a ton of work on top of all of this. And so I feel like having taken some time away from it, um, I think that what happens when we are about to embark in this new journey um, of becoming a parent, I think that there's a lot of things that come up that we need to address. And so don't be surprised if the universe throws a ton of stuff at your way and is kind of like, these are all things that you sort of need to deal with. Um, and anytime you have like a hiccup in this journey, I'm already getting the message is, to instead of fight it, stop and be aware of what the message is. And so this week was intense. And so I was like, okay, this is happening for a reason. And so I took the time to basically look at each instance and be like, what's going on here? You know, with Mufasa leaving, I felt like the animals in the house were just not happy and I wasn't taking enough time to give them the attention that they needed. And that was important before I had kids, you know, really prioritizing my time with them and remembering not to forget them. And you know, my great grandmother dying, seeing my whole family, that was a great reminder of how important family is over work. And um, you know, I really had to force myself to stop working um, even though we were having a bunch of emergencies at work. And um, I don't know, there was just a lot of lessons to learn in that. And I think I made it through the week and I didn't panic because I was like, all right, each of these things has something to do with this process, it's coming up right as I'm starting to try to get pregnant for a reason, so I'm gonna pay attention to it. One of the things that I've been doing at night is actually meditating with Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin is one of the goddesses of childbirth, and it's weird because I bought a statue of her years and years ago when my husband and I had first started dating, and I've had it sitting in my bedroom this whole time, and um, I've just been so connected to her. Um, and so I've been doing a womb warming meditation and all that is is basically just laying in bed, focusing on your sacral chakra, focusing on your womb, pretending that white light is coming into it, pretending that, you know, that womb is warm with sunshine and you're welcoming it, an energy of a baby in, you're making it inviting and you're just concentrating on that area and just making it warm, welcome and inviting. So this is sort of my baby binder. I'm using it to keep notes on books that I've read. Um, so things about the first, second, and third trimester. Also things about baby, like what happens at what month. Um, tracking my ovulation right now. I'm just having so much fun with this. And I like 
writing things down and tracking things. And if you want to know more about how to do this, I'll link in the description and maybe put a card up on people who very in detail show how to do this. This is another fun way that you can pull cards, and I do this often. Sometimes when you just don't have a question, just say how you feel to the card and expect the card to be a response from your guides. So in my journal, I wrote something like, um, I'm feeling like we're not going to be able to have kids. And so I pulled a card expecting that to sort of be the response from my guides. And the card that I pulled is why. And I think that was such a fitting card because it was my guides turning my question around on me and being like, why do you think this? And again, I sort of sat with it and I meditated and I was like, you know, I feel like this is a lack mentality. I feel like I'm not allowed to have kids. I'm not allowed to have that abundance because we've already had so many good things in our life. Um, and that comes from like old, old money blocks that I have, which is kind of interesting. So the point I think that I'm trying to make is when you have this manic manifesting come up, stop, sit with that feeling, figure out why it's there. If you're not sure, pull some cards. And then once you realize, oh, okay, I have this limiting belief or this is a fear, it's so much easier to let that fear go. Last note, don't be surprised if other people start manifesting what you want. Um, I just heard from my cousin, um, like cousin my age, cousin I grew up with that he and his wife are pregnant and I think there's a tendency to just be like, oh my god, you know, they get it and I don't and then you get into lack mentality mode and that was not my reaction at all. I love this cousin. I love his wife. I was so excited for them. And I knew that this is a sign that I'm manifesting it because it starts manifesting for other people. And that's a sign that you're on the right track. And I kind of look at it as a test to throw you off. And if you let it throw you off, you know, you can start manifesting the exact opposite. So keep it as a sign of positivity and know that there's plenty of abundance for everybody and you can have it too. So I just picked up um, five maternity shirts. <laughs> it's only the second month that I've been trying, but I saw them online, 10 bucks for five shirts and they like are nice kind of like work shirts. And I thought that might as well grab them. I'm setting the intention that I am going to get pregnant. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to get them because I am going to be pregnant versus being like, oh, no, I might not ever get pregnant. I shouldn't waste my money. Um, so I think as long as you're not buying your whole nursery, it's okay to buy a few things here and there to help you actualize the intention. Still on the second month of trying this month has been way more rough, and I think it's because I've been trying to analyze everything, track everything, I've gotten way too into the tests, um, and I think that's natural. I think that, oh, hi, Mufasa. I think that we all want to do that, and it's, it, at first it was fun for me to keep track of and sort of watch how everything was progressing, but then it became, like, obsessed with why... Why am I not ovulating? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? And, I, and I'm just realizing that it's causing me more stress and more negativity and got sick, all sorts of stuff. So I think one of the biggest things I'm learning with this process is that you have to, you just have to trust your gut. I just feel like doing all these tests and these, these things that, that, you know, the app, like as much as I like doing it, I feel like it's just manifesting a lot of negativity in myself. So I'm, even though it feels wrong to not pay attention to my body and all of that to figure out when is the best time to try to get pregnant, um, I'm, I'm just feeling like it's not the best route for me. So I'm trusting my gut um, and I'm going to stop doing them as much just to uh, let it breathe. Mufasa, what are you doing? This is dangerous. <laughs> um, so I think some things you can actually ask your tarot cards yourself is why am I not getting pregnant? What is blocking me? What can I do better to manifest getting pregnant? Um, and I think for me I was a lot just focusing on the negative and focusing on the fact that it wouldn't happen 
And so those were all really good questions for me to ask because then I pulled the tarot cards and it was very clear and now I can move forward into working on them instead of just ignoring that. So again, I think it's so important during this process to not ignore fears. And I think when we ignore fears, all of us do that in a different way. I really truly feel like your energy can affect your body. And if you are stressed, you can it can affect you physically. Um, and if you keep telling yourself, oh, I'm not gonna get pregnant or it's not gonna happen, then you, it's, it's the law of attraction. You manifest what you think about. Right now, I have a bunch of symptoms that are strange for me. Um, it's hard to tell because I was also on birth control for like 11 years, so it could be just my body getting back to normal. But I don't know. I feel like all the signs are pointing to it. Um, there's just a ton of little things for my guides. I even pulled a card today and I pulled the fertility card and I was like, ah! <laughs> I'm feeling really good. I feel like I might be pregnant. I could just totally be in like, I, I might not be at all. It's like, oh, well, you're psychic. Why can't you tell if you're pregnant or not? And it's because of your own bias. I mean, just because you're psychic doesn't mean that you have no bias at all. And so my bias wants to say, yes, it's going to happen because of all these signs. But then my bias is like, no, it's not going to happen because you're wishful thinking. And then my psychicness is like, oh, I'm picking up on the signs. But then the other part of my psychicness is like, you're probably going to be disappointed, but it's okay. I don't know. I am going to make a video um, separately about kind of what... What psychics can and can't read in regards to pregnancy. So check that out. So I wanted to give you guys three different exercises that you could do right now while you're just kind of waiting to get pregnant. First exercise is going to be automatic writing. The second exercise is going to be shamanic journeying. And the third is going to be some tarot card pulls. So with automatic writing, um, definitely check out my other video that I've done on this. Um, it's Basically, you start with a prompt, and I'm giving you guys a few prompts right here that um, you can just go ahead and start writing with. And what you do is you want to start writing the prompt and then just write whatever comes to mind. It can make no sense at all. The whole point of this is just to write as much as possible. And if you don't know what to write, just don't stop. Just go back to the prompt. So you might say, my future children want to say, hello, hi. How are you doing? You feel like it's not flowing, so start back over again. My future children want to say, I miss you, I love you, you know. Um, as long as you just keep going, um, and honestly, I would say give it a page or two to where you really feel like you're flowing and you're zoning out, and when you zone out, that's honestly when you start to get some more um, intuitive um information. So then once you're done, then you can look back at it, read it, see how much of it is true. I did this for myself and it was crazy because um, the, um, the next child that I am going to have was basically talking to me and um, it, he kept rhyming and I felt like it was a he. Um, I always feel like it's a he, but um, he kept rhyming and I was like, this is so weird. And when I told my husband, he was like, oh, that makes so much sense. I used to rhyme a lot as a child and I was like, really? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I know that sounds weird, but that like super resonates with me. And I was like, okay, cool. So the next exercise is for shamanic journeying. Now you're probably going to have to watch my um, video on my introduction to shamanic journeying. I would try doing a shamanic journey, not to this first, do it a couple times and then come back to this. Um, and so for this shamanic journey prompts, you can use the same prompts that we used for the auto writing. Um, or I would go ahead and just say the big one, I would say, I want to meet my next child or my future children. Um, and I remember with shamanic journey to leave it really open-ended to let go of it, let go of that question and let them take, let your guides take you um, through that journey and lead you through it and don't focus too much on your question They heard it. They'll get to it um, in their own way So I actually did this a few years ago and it was really interesting because my owl guide Came to me and basically took me to this tree where there were three baby owls and I was like, all right, what are what are these owls? 
and she's like these are your your kids and I was like three because I only want two and she's like well the third one is there if you decide and so it was like I could already feel their energy and they were waiting for me and I can't really remember what happened with the rest of the journey I just remember that they were little baby owls which was kind of cool the last exercise um, I think is probably the one that you'll use the most and you'll have to have a tarot deck to do this and if you don't have a tarot or an oracle deck um, check out my video on my like quick start guide um, decks are really easy to come by you can just go pay for one I think everyone should have at least one tarot deck um, especially if you watch my channel <laughs> I think you should um, definitely invest in some but um, I think when we are stressed out um, about getting pregnant, it's so important to just pick up your tarot deck. Pick up your oracle deck. Stop looking for answers outside. Stop Googling shit. Stop asking people um, because we always need to come back to our intuition first. So some of the prompts you can use are what is in my way of getting pregnant? What issues do I need to address before getting pregnant? What do I need to know about getting pregnant? You can ask so many different variations. Just remember to always ask with what, why, and how. Again, I go over that in my um, Quick Start Tarot course, but, or sorry, not course, just video. Um, the biggest thing is to just not ask yes or no questions of am I pregnant, yes or no. Um, because that's a lot harder to use with Oracle cards and there's a lot of other issues with that question, um, of which I'm going to talk about in my other video within this playlist. More things that you can do while you are waiting that um, can help you. Um, definitely check out a lot of YouTube videos that are fertility based. There are tons of meditations out there um, for getting pregnant. There's also a ton of yoga videos for fertility. I highly recommend my friend um, Bliss Findings. Um, she's my personal friend, she's a Reiki guru, she does um, all sorts of yoga stuff, so she does a lot of great videos on fertility um, meditations, but also like fertility yoga. Um, so definitely check her out, I'm going to link her in the description down below. So I'm currently 10 days past ovulation, if any of you know what that means. I am impatient, <laughs> and, oh yeah? So are you for food, huh? Wow. <laughs> um, but my husband and I are going on a sort of like mini vacation over the weekend. And I was like, oh, wouldn't it be so perfect if I could let him know? Um, and then maybe if I'm not, I could also drink. <laughs> so um, I think I'm going to test tomorrow morning. Just following my intuition and I'm kind of like, I feel like I should test soon. And... Um, I pulled a card and the card said don't back down stand up for what you believe in and I kind of took that as I've told two people that um, I think I might be pregnant and I don't take that I don't say that unless I'm really serious I just feel like the symptoms I'm getting are crazy both of those people were like don't think about it don't stress about it you're probably not and I was kind of like but what if I am <laughs> And they were so quick to like turn it down and so I think that card was sort of like stand up for what you believe in and so when I really thought about it I was like I feel like I am so I'm just gonna test because again it would be cool if I could surprise my husband this weekend if not I can drink <laughs> My heart is freezing. The thing was, is on camera, I can never get a picture of a video of it. 
And just so you know, for pregnancy tests, even if there's any sort of line, that's a positive. I do feel though, if I surprised him now and he looked at the test, he'd be like, I don't see anything, you're not pregnant. <laughs> so I wanna give it a day or two to really make sure. I think I'm gonna test one more time in the morning and then tell my husband while we're here. Just trying to figure out some sort of way to like surprise him. <laughs> All right. All right. I knew you were gonna say that. Is that why you brought potatoes? Potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta record me when I'm stuffing my face. <laughs> I was waiting for you to get up. So yeah, I basically stopped the camera and um, he was, he was like, oh yeah, I knew it. Like, and I was like, what? How did you know it? There's a, like, I was so surprised. It was only like two months uh, that we had been trying. And, um, but basically we had a great time up in Breckenridge. Even though it was fast for me, um, I think that had to do with two reasons. One, my mentality, and two, probably a little bit my health. Um, my mentality, I had been spending a lot of time doing life coaching, check out that video that I made, um, and preparing myself to get to this place, both in my work and my personal life. My husband and I had talked about it. I mean, we had, we had done like a baby ritual. This is ridiculous right now, look at this. <sighs> So I think um, a lot of my mentality doing those exercises that I shared with you was just, I was just ready. Um, and that doesn't mean that if you're trying and your mentality is there and you're not getting pregnant that you're doing something wrong. I think the other half of it is your body. Um, I really thought that after being on birth control for so long that it would take a really long time. Um, but I think I just got lucky. But um, I should say, you know, even if you're doing all of these things and something's still not working, you know, definitely go see your doctor. You know, there's a lot of this that is medical. And as much as we want to trust our intuition and go see psychics about this kind of stuff, I think it's really important to also realize that sometimes it could be your body. <laughs> oh, do you love me? So even though my sort of getting pregnant was shorter. I hope that some of the exercises I provided were still very helpful. So the next piece of this playlist will be my entire pregnancy. Um, so that will definitely be a little bit longer and we'll start that video out with surprising um, some of my family members. So really excited about doing that. So yeah, I am utterly surprised. I don't feel pregnant. I feel like I'm bloated. Like, I, I feel like I've had a lot of Chinese food and I worked out really hard because my back is killing me and I've just got like indigestion and bloating and it's just, well, I'm pretty tired. But, um, super excited and I hope you guys join me for my next video. Thanks for watching this very short journey. <laughs>